If you want to be consistent, it's really important to get the club shallowing in the start of the downswing. So this is the act of getting this club to kind of flatten out in the start of the downswing. What that allows you to do is that allows you to stay in your posture and to keep rotating and turning through impact so that way you don't have to make any compensations. If I'm steep like this, I'm gonna to need to make some sort of compensation in the downswing that usually leads to standing up, early releasing, flipping, all things that lead to inconsistency. So what we need to do is have the proper elbow movement in both the backswing and the downswing to be able to get this club to shallow properly. So what I see oftentimes of people who struggle to shallow out the club is that this elbow, this trail elbow, tends to flare out a lot at the top of the swing. And you can see how that really gets my lead wrist to cup and open the face and also gets the club way across the line. When I'm in that position and I start my downswing, this club is just too short of a time to be able to recover and to be able to get that club laying down. Now, there are players that flare out that trail elbow, but those players have much longer swings. So someone like a Jack Nicklaus, uh, John Daly, right? They have very, very long swing. They're basically getting their lead arm to almost 12 o'clock at the top of the swing, and now that gives them plenty of time to get that club shallowing out in the start of the downswing. Now, just because you have plenty of time to shallow out the club doesn't mean that you're gonna do it. So this drill that I'm gonna show you is gonna be beneficial whether you have a long swing or a short swing or anywhere in between if you're struggling to shallow out the club. So like I said, it has to do with that trail elbow movement in the backswing. What's happening is, is our trail elbow is called, is what's doing what is called internally rotating. So you can think of that as winning an arm wrestling contest. So if I go up to the top of the swing and I'm winning that arm wrestling contest, it's gonna be very, very difficult for my shoulder to go external and for my elbow to work in to lay down the club, which you can, you can think of that as losing an arm wrestling contest. So what I would like to do in the backswing is get to where you're somewhere in between. You know, maybe you're at, the, you're at the top. You're not quite losing the arm wrestling contest. You're right at the beginning. That's kind of what you want to feel like at the top of the swing, that the forearm is more vertical at the top of the swing. If I'm really flaring out, you can see how my forearm's going to get more horizontal. I want it to feel more vertical. If it's not straight up and down vertical, that's fine, but that's the feeling that we want to have is that we're kind of in that, that set position. We're getting ready to arm wrestle, right? We want to feel like we just have, we're pretty close to vertical with that elbow at the top. Now, as we start down, we actually want to start to lose that arm wrestling contest. So that way we can get that club shallowing out, stay in our posture, rotate through impact, and be in a very, very consistent position. So this drill is great to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out here. I'm going to take your lead, lead arm and your wrist. I want you to bend the knuckles back like this. And then you're going to pick this part, you know, kind of the logo of your glove here, and you're going to put it right above your trail elbow, and then you're going to grip the club and get in your setup position. Now, I don't recommend that you try to hit balls doing this, especially in the beginning. It's very, very difficult to do so. So in the beginning here, don't hit the ball. I just want you to get the feeling of how the elbow is moving. If you want to work toward, it's totally optional hitting the ball later. That's completely fine. So again, get that arm underneath there. And what you can see when I do this, it kind of holds my arm in that position. If I rotate to the top, you can see that my elbow is already kind of in that position. Now, when I start the downswing, I want to feel almost as if I'm pulling on my elbow to be able to get that, uh, that reverse arm wrestling, that losing the arm wrestling move. And you can see when I do that, how that shallows out the club. And now I can very easily turn through the ball and be in a very, very consistent position. So do some repetitions with that lead arm behind that, that hand behind the elbow there, just above the elbow, just below uh, the tricep there. And again, we're gonna go up to the top really, really slow. I want you to feel that stay, that elbow staying in a good position and then pull on the elbow as you're coming down, go really, really slow with it. Once you start to get comfortable with that and you start understanding, okay, this is how my elbow should work. And again, if you have a longer swing, you're not gonna be able to go to the full long position and that's okay because this is gonna help you feel what you need to do in the downswing to get to recover from that really flared elbow that's helping you go longer and create power, but it's helping you feel what you need to do in the start of the downswing to get into that position. Just keep in mind that this isn't gonna be the full length of your normal swing, right? So again, once you start do, doing some of these, getting the feeling of this much, much better, you know, I can do a much better job there, kind of brushing the turf, imagine, imagining them coming through impact here. That was much better there. Once I start to get a better feeling for that, now I can start to work toward more fluid swings and not taking a pause at the top. So now I'm just gonna go nice and fluid with this. 
going up to the top, I'm getting a good turn, feeling this club lay behind me, and then I'm swinging through all the way into a full finish. Now what's really important here is that we pivot from there, right? What we don't wanna do is go up to the top of the swing and then just throw the arms. That's not gonna help us. When we, get the, when we take the arm out of there, we're just gonna stand up and flip the club. And that's not what we wanna do. That may get you shallowing, but it's not gonna allow you to get that good compression on the ball by rotating your body and getting the hands more in front, right? So we wanna make sure when we go up to the top, we wanna to feel the rotation as we're coming through there. So that way we're coming into impact and we have that really, really good shaft lean position. So do some of these, work up to fluid swings where you're going really slow. You're probably never gonna get up to full speed with these. I've never really had good luck with doing that. But once you get that good feeling in a slow practice swing, you probably wanna go up to about 50% doing this. That's where I find the, the happy zone is. Once you're able to do that, now let's take a normal practice swing. Now I want you to get that, replicate that same feeling and really try to exaggerate that feeling. So I'm going up to the top, I'm feeling that elbow more in, that forearm is more vertical at the top, and I wanna feel that reverse arm wrestling move. I'm shallowing out the club as I'm pivoting through. Work through that with the practice swings, build up to full speed where you're doing that, then add the golf ball. Now when you add the golf ball, what's likely gonna happen is you're gonna start hitting some balls out to the right. The reason for that is that your path is now gonna be from the inside, but you're not, you haven't learned the proper way to square up the face. And it's okay, it's not your fault. You're used to coming down steep and needing different wrist angles to be able to hit a functional shot. And those wrist angles are typically gonna include, you know, kind of a cuppy lead wrist position and a throwing position with the trail hand. You see, when you shallow out the club and you pivot the body, you're gonna have the hands more in front. So we have to learn the proper wrist angles to square up the face. And this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method. So this drill is a great building block to work up to the anti-roll method, getting that proper position in the backswing and then getting that club shallowing out in the downswing. So that way you can start hitting some much more solid shots and playing some really consistent golf. So if you wanna check out that anti-roll method, highly recommend it after you get done doing this you're gonna be able to get that shaft lean and compression once you do that anti-roll method. If you wanna see that video, I'm gonna play a preview of that in just a second, but if you wanna see the whole video, all you have to do is click the iCard that's gonna appear up on your screen here in just a second. If you don't see the iCard, no worries, sometimes it doesn't pop up. <laughs> but if you don't see it, it'll be, there'll be a link for the video here uh, in the description below. So everybody play well, and I'll talk to you soon. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep, and that steep club causes all your problems. Causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,